and that is Heidi Shear. She is beautiful on the inside and the outside. She was former Mrs. Michigan, former Ms. World International. You were Mrs. Ohio, too. So she used to live in Ohio. Um, absolutely incredible person, one of those warrior moms who is out there making a huge difference for her child and for other children. She has a booth that many of you might have stopped by called Mighty Guts because, like we learned, there's a lot with digestion and a lot going on. Heidi's going to tell us an inspirational story about her son and his recovery. He's about 90% recovered, and it is really amazing. She had me in tears the other day, so I can't wait for you to hear Heidi Shear. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Is this okay? Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I'm always excited to share my story. And it's amazing to me how uh, this journey sometimes comes full circle with Dr. seeing Dr. Sue up here. When she was up here saying, you know, you need to maybe call the lab and find a physician to go to. Well, that's how I found Dr. Sue. <laughs> I called Great Labs and uh, Great Plains Labs and I said, all right, I've been on the internet for three days, I need to heal my son, and I need these tests, and I need to, you to give me a list of physicians that have an idea of what I'm talking about. And Dr. Sue's name was on that list. And as always, I prayed about it, and her name jumped out at me, and that's where our journey began. So, 20 minutes, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to do this, so I'm going to be in fast motion here, and I, I'd be happy to speak to any of you after I've, um, I've finished up here, but my son Gannon, he has come so far, like many of you, I, I, was, I, had a, I had a neurotypical child when he was born, and then at the age of about 15 months, his soul, his soul was stolen from us. Um, he was diagnosed with autism just um, before his fourth birthday. We didn't know what was going on. At first, we thought he was losing his hearing because he stopped you know, turning to us when we said his name. He wasn't babbling anymore. He wasn't speaking anymore. And uh, we later learned that he had autism. He was first uh, labeled language impaired, and we enrolled him into an ECDD program. And it was there that the, um, the speech pathologist called me on a Friday afternoon and said, I think your son's on the spectrum. I'll never forget that phone call. And that's when I got on the internet for the next three days. I didn't. I didn't stop until I had a list of information and I was armed with a plan for my child. And one thing that's really hard, and a couple of the speakers have talked about it, is acceptance. I know a lot of people waste a lot of time dealing with the diagnosis. It's just a word. It's just a word. You have to accept what's going on and you have to look it in the eyes and fight because your child is counting on you. And you can make a difference. And people are always saying to me, you know, what, what worked for you? How did your son, you know, get to the point where he's at today? Well, there were a lot of, a lot of things along the way, but number one is prayer. I, I, uh, I depend on prayer a lot, and my Lord and Savior, and my, and my church, and that is, one of the huge reasons why he's just about recovered. <laughs> Another was diet, which Dr. Sue talked about. Boy, number one, as far as something that you can do in your own home, while you're waiting to speak to a professional out there somewhere, while you're waiting to you know, get that call back from the doctor, you can start implementing a healthier diet for your child. And my son had such a severe gluten intolerance that one little Pepperidge Farm goldfish would put him out of school for a week. He was once in the library when he was three years old in his ECDD classroom, and there was one under the table in the library, and he ate it. And I watched my child transform. I watched him. It was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He became anxious. He was in pain, and he wandered. My son was a runner. He knew no fear, like we were talking about earlier. And so I couldn't leave my house. We couldn't leave our house. We couldn't go to the mall. We couldn't go to the store because he would be off. And the only way that I could travel with him would be to have him on a leash, and I refused to do, do that. So we were basically prisoners in our own home. 
couldn't go to the movies. I actually went to an autism support group meeting. I'll never forget it in Canton. We were sitting at a table and some of the moms were sharing pictures of their children. One sitting next to me was, showed me a picture of her son at Chuck E. Cheese, another one to my right showed me pictures of them at Disney. And I left the support group meeting, an autism support group meeting, and I went out into the parking lot and I cried. And said, oh my God, I don't even fit into a, an autism support group meeting. I can't go to Chuck E. Cheese. I can't take my son to Disney. I will lose him. He will go with a stranger. He'll bite some other child. He'll push them down. I felt very alone. But I searched. I didn't give up. I searched for another support group meeting that had more parents that were like me, and their children had the same issues. We have to bond together. We have to depend on our tribe. That's where we gain inspiration. Also, we can't let fear prevent us from helping our children. And we can't be afraid to share our story. I know a lot of moms, including me in the beginning, we don't want to say the A word because we don't want that label to follow our child through life. So we try to push it under the rug. Well, you know what? My son started healing when I decided that I needed to share my story. I learned about how to help my child from listening to a mom that had walked the road before me. She had the courage to get up there and speak about her child, and I needed to do that. So I made a deal with God. <laughs> I said, Lord, I will get out there and I will help. I will help the rest of my life. I will help children, and I will help families recover their kids or improve their kids' lives. But I need you to protect my son. And he's keeping his part of the bargain. I don't worry about that anymore. So what did we do? Well, we started with diet, as I said. We were lucky. We had results in about three weeks. I was told you have to remove the gluten or the casein or whatever it may be for at least three months, at least three months. And it's 100%. As Dr. Sue was saying, you can't say, oh, well, you know, he had a little pretzel at the Club Scout, you know, the Cub Scout meeting, or he had this little donut hole at, you know, this party. No, it doesn't work that way. It's 100% commitment, no infractions. And we were lucky. In about three months, he spoke his first sentence. We were down on the floor and we were playing and I said, I love you, Gannon. And it was as if he heard me for the first time in his life and he was four years old. And he looked up at me and he said, I love you too, mama. And I, I was like, yes, I'm doing the right thing. This is cool, this is working. Now we need to dive in further and we need more healing. We can never give up, never be satisfied. There's always an improvement somewhere with all of us, be it health-wise or spiritual-wise, there's always improvement, waiting. So we treated him for about, oh gosh, we were treating him for about seven years, we had huge improvements, then he was stuck for a little while, he was stuck for about three years, uh, we were still having some nutritional difficulties. He was, he was not gaining weight. He had only gained about six pounds in four years, actually. And then we learned about a new protocol about detoxifying the body more, getting rid of parasites. And this program was huge for us. And I, I'm happy to share it with any of you later. Um, within that next year, he gained 16 pounds. Yeah, it was huge. He started growing. He grew fit five inches, he went up three shoe sizes. I mean, it was like, wow, nutrition is finally, you know, going where it needs to go. <laughs> and my son is finally thriving and growing. And it was there that the, uh, the recovery truly came into play. He graduated from special education. He's in middle school now in a typical classroom, which has been very frightening for me as a mom <laughs> because middle school is frightening for any parent. Um, but one that is going through life with a child that have, has had such difficulties and has come from such a difficult place, it's even more traumatic. But you know what? I, I said my prayers. I walked into that school with him, and I said, you know what? You can do this, Gannon. You can do it. And he's doing great. I just got a call from the principal the other day, and he said, I just want to tell you, your son's awesome. He makes me laugh every day, and he's just a really cool kid. And I was like, wow. Wow, that's amazing.
that that's just amazing. Um, we've had a lot of doctors along the way, and just like every health ailment, you need to find the physician that works with you and your family. Just because they're certified in one area or another doesn't mean they're, they're the physician for you. Find one that connects. We've had many, and we've had a great team of professionals, MDs, chiropractors, naturopaths, homeopaths. We've had a great team of people behind us. However, we've had to you know, get rid of some along the way. So don't be afraid to say, no, it's not working here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go try to find somebody else, because you deserve the best for your child. And remember that every therapy isn't for every child either. When I share my story, I always say, you know what, this worked great for Gannon. It might not work for your child. It's worked for many. You have to try it. You have to try it and see what happens. We had a monumental experience happen just last week. What we always pray for is for friendship for our child. We pray for love, empathy, sympathy, just warmth. And Tuesday night, Gannon, at his, as, at, during prayers the night before, which shocked me, he said, Lord, please help me with connection to my friends. I was like, and the next day, our doorbell rang three times, and three boys came over our house to play with Gannon. I, I mean, that's a miracle. I took a picture of him. I was like the stalker, you know, running around with the camera. I didn't want him to know I was following him. <laughs> And I took a picture out, out the back um, of them on the trampoline, and they were playing tag. You had to, one had to close their eyes, and they were playing tag with one another. And there's Gannon right in the middle. That is a miracle, people. That is what we all hope and pray for. And I just said, thank you. You know, thank you, Lord. And I just want to close with something that he said. Um, like I said, one of the most monumental times in our healing was when he said, I love you, Mom. And which was phenomenal, it rocked my world. I knew we were doing the right thing. But as, as a parent, we always want more for our children. And last year, he was 11 years old, and we went to Washington, D.C. And uh, we were walking through the, mo the monuments. It was dark at night. And uh, he came up to me, and he put his arm around me. And he said these words. I, I quickly, um, throughout the tears, I grabbed my phone, and I wrote them down, because I never wanted to forget these words that he said to me. Thank you, Mom, for being the best mom in the world. You love me, and you heal me. What would I ever do without you? I want to go back in time to the good old days when I was little. I am remembering those times when I was an infant and you held me all the time. Oh, Mom, please don't ever leave this world. I love you so much. That is from a boy that's waking up. He's woken up from autism. And each and every one of you here that has a sick child, you can heal that child. You just don't ever, ever give up. Thank you.